Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. So let me see. I'm trying to send some shares out here. How do I do that? Good morning. I just want to make sure things are working. I'm waiting on. Let me see. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. To God be the glory. Let me see. I don't see any comments here. Oh, let me... Okay. I'm trying to see. Good morning. I don't see any comments though, so I don't know if I don't have them on. Oh. All right, somebody say something. Let me see if I can um, make sure that it's on. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining um, C2C Worldwide Ministries. I don't know what I have done. Um, I can't see any comments. My comments are frozen or something. So, okay. But either way, we're going to go ahead. I'm so sorry if I'm not able to, uh, you know, to respond or to say anything uh, back. Hopefully, it'll fix itself. I'm not sure, but anyway, good morning. Thank you so much for being in here. Thank you for joining C2C Worldwide Ministries. This is Wake Up Wednesday, glory to God. Wake Up Wednesday. The ministry of C2C Worldwide Ministries is actually charging you, charging you to arise from your slumber. Basically, the purpose of this, this Wake Up Wednesday is to bring an awareness and um, so basically to command a sleeping nation to arise. There's so many topics, so many things that we need to discuss just to ensure that you are comfortable and that you understand what God is saying to us and how to walk this thing out. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, I thank God for you. And I thank God for uh, your ministry and just you being a part of this ministry. I would like to say, first of all, happy birthday to those that have celebrated a birthday this week. God bless you. And if I didn't say it last week, God bless you. Um, I want to say happy anniversary to those that are celebrating their wedding anniversaries or uh, uh, work anniversaries. God bless you as well. Um, speaking of anniversary... My husband and I will celebrate 25 years this weekend, so we're very excited about that. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Um, so, yeah. So, oh, before I, before I forget, because I always seem to forget, I want to invite you out to, to join us for our Miracle Monday prayer call. Um, it's every Monday at 6 p.m. Um, it's 605. Hey, Brian, I see you on here. Uh, the Miracle Monday prayer call is, the number for that is 605-313-5396. Um, and the code is 404741. So join us. This Monday, we actually prayed over the city of Chicago. And when I tell you the anointing was in the place, we, we pray for Chicago, its churches, its pastors, its schools, its neighborhoods. Hallelujah. Um, and so we're going to continue to do that. So join us. Um, join us for that. Amen. So let's get started. You know, when I was preparing this, let me tell you, God said something. It's so powerful. He said that it's time to take the giants down. Do you hear me? It is time to take the giants down. Down. So come on, let's talk about that this morning. When we think of a giant, you know what? I just feel like I want to pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord God. Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor. Lord God, we magnify you. Hallelujah. We lift you up. We exalt you. We admonish you. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you, Almighty God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the revelation today of the giants in our lives and that you have charged your people and you have put out the declaration that it is time to take the giants down. So, Father, let us walk in obedience. Let us do what you have called us to do. Strengthen us. Empower us. Father, I decrease that you may increase. Speak to your people. Holy Spirit, lead and guide. Thank you and praise you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So now listen to this. The title is The Giants Must Come Down. It is time to take the giants down. So now giant is, de is defined as something that is very great in size. Come on. Very great in force. Huge enormous something that is very big right so when we think about that and we think of the purpose of a giant is to stop you right so think about what is the purpose of a giant being placed in your life something that's abnormal in size it's, it's actually the purpose of it is to evoke fear to cause fear to rise up in you to cause you to um, to doubt right? To cause you to look at yourself um, and look at your inability. Something that has come to intimidate you. Something that is there to discourage you. You understand what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. When you think about a giant, and I'm not saying that Shaq is a giant, okay? But I'm just talking in, in comparison to the size of, of, you know, a lot of people. He's, he's very, very tall and very, very big. So what happens with that? So let me give you the example. Remember uh, Kevin Hart? Uh, he's like 5'3", five, 5'3", three, five, three or 5'4". Five, and he took a picture next to Shaquille O'Neal. Now we know Shaquille O'Neal is 7'1", right? So the difference in that size, it was it was oh my god it was so big and I was and he what he had talked about this is his verbiage he actually was talking about how him standing next to Shaq everybody always called him short he knew he was short he not he don't have no issues with being short but what happened was just the reflection of being next to someone that tall kind of made him really recognize his shortness Let's say it like that. It made him recognize his shortness. So that's what I'm saying when I say the purpose of the giant is to show you your weaknesses, right? This big monstrous situation comes up before you and basically it's to show you that you're inferior to it, so to speak. You understand what I'm saying? So I want you to think about that. Um, so, so when you think about that, so he's 5'4", Shaq was 7'1", right? How about this? The David Banner. Now, when we think about David Banner and the Hulk, right? Hulk is this huge person. David Banner is not intimidating in the sense of, you know, he's just a regular man. But when he turns into the Hulk, this giant of a man, and if you look at the movies today, they're making him bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And again, the purpose of that is for intimidation, to cause fear. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that when we talk about the giants must come down, I'm talking about the things in your life that are so huge, that are so enormous, that are so astronomical, that are causing you to doubt, that are causing you to be intimidated, that are causing you to fear, that are causing you not to walk in and do exactly what it is that God has called you to do. The word of the Lord today is that it's time to take the giants down, okay? So we're going to talk about that today. Now, it's also called to bring us to do a comparative analysis. Now, I always talk about this. Like, for example, it doesn't matter. Let's think about it like in women, right? No matter how long and beautiful, you know, your hair is, when you see someone else that whose hair is longer, then you're like, well, maybe my hair isn't that short. You know what I mean? I'm that long, right? So, I mean, you always do things like that. You in the gym and you working out, you building your muscles up, and then you see somebody else that's twice your size. It's almost like it brings you to the point that you recognize who you are in your 
um, in your own strength and ability. It puts you right in focus and in line with who you are. But guess what? That's exactly what God wants. He don't want you living your life for this person and comparing yourself to that person and trying to be like this person and trying to be like that person. That is not his purpose for you. So you do stay in your lane. So don't think that it's a negative thing when that thing comes up. It's to just show you who you are and you need to stay in your lane and allow God to, to be all that he needs to be in your life and to help you through your encounters. So we'll talk about it. Now, I didn't name this Goliath must come down because what God showed me was that Goliath was David's giant. Now, each one of our giants have a name. Come on now. It's just showing you that David's giant that he faced and encountered was Goliath. Now, as we know Goliath, now think about this. Now, we said we know that Shaq is 7'1". The word of God tells us that Goliath was actually six cubits in a span, which would make him nine feet, nine inches tall. Can you imagine that? That's a monstrous man. Now, that is a giant, right? So I'm just saying. So that is, that's a crazy height. And his name actually means exile. You know, and exiles when you're banned from your country because of punishment or punitive measures or things like that. So we know what his name means. We know that he was a Philistine warrior. We know that he was nine feet tall. I mean, come on now. I want you to think about this. In all of our lives, there are giants. And so today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your giant's name may not be Goliath, but whatever it is, God is saying today it is time for him to come down. For it to come down. Amen. Amen. So let's take a moment. I want you to think right now in your mind. What are your Goliaths? What are the things that are standing in the way of you doing what God has called you to do? What are the things that are standing in the way of you walking in victory today? Now, we, we could think of something on the outward. It could be something. It could be some type of barrier, you know, where the, you feel like you need a promotion on your job. You feel like you're not, re, you know, not being received, whatever it is. It could be something like fear. It could be healing that is needed. It could be a spirit of poverty that is causing you, you know, that's the giant in your life. Um, there's a spirit of um, just whatever that's coming around you. That is, that's this huge thing. That's big force, this gigantic, enormous thing that you're looking at every single day, right? And I want you to know that today God is saying that it must come down. Maybe it's loneliness. Maybe it's a spirit of loneliness. Maybe it's a spirit of rejection. Maybe it's selfishness. You know, whatever it is, I want you to think about it in your mind. What is your giant? Some of us may have multiple giants that we're facing. Come on, it could be an army of giants that are around us. Either way, but I challenge you today to write those down on a piece of paper. If, you're, if you have paper handy, write it down on a piece of paper for me, okay? Because we're going to go, I'm going to show you what God is telling us to do today with that but if you're not able to do it then you take a mental note literally think about what are the obstacles that God that that are standing in front of you that we're going to ask God to remove today because his promise to us today is that Goliath it is time to take down the giants in our life amen so I want to look at this story I want to look at this story in first Samuel 17 and that is the story of David and Goliath amen I would like to take a look at that story Okay, so we're going to start. Is It's 1 Samuel 17. Okay, now, I'm going to kind of paraphrase it, but some of it I'm going to go through really quickly. Now, the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together. So here we go. We, we, the scene is being set, okay? You have the army of the Philistines and you have the army of Israel. And Saul was leading them, right? Okay, now, speaking of Saul... Now, the word of God tells us that Saul was a head higher than all of the men. So they estimate Saul's height to be about 6'1". Okay, so in, the, in, the, in Israel, they felt like when you come up against uh, Goliath, that Saul was the best opponent because he was the tallest of all of the people in the kingdom. So you need to understand that as the story progresses, why they were trying to push Saul out there. Like, not only are you in charge and you should be the one fight him, but you're the one that stands the closest to him, if that's even possible with this nine foot giant. Okay. But just keep that in mind. Okay. 
And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched in the valley of Eli and set the battle to array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was, now think about that. He's already nine, nine. And now he has a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. What? Okay. Now, a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Are you kidding me right now? 5,000 shekels of brass. So now, I want you to understand this. Now, this is actually 5,000 shekels of brass. That's 157 pounds. So listen to this. So they're saying that his coat, right? So his coat was, uh, is is armed with a coat of mail. Um, so basically what that is, it's like, have you seen like the fish scales? It was almost like a chain. So it was almost like the fish scale. So it's like, it has the layers of it here and then it kind of on top of each other and it covers them up, right? So this thing was 157 pounds. And I'm giving you these numbers so and these visuals so that you can understand how big and how gigantic this thing was. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. Seven. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. 600 shekels of iron means it was about 15 pounds. Now, let me give you an illustration. Back during that time, a regular soldier's spearhead was about one pound. So this giant spearhead alone is 15 pounds. Come on now. I know, I hope y'all I hope y'all 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 following this with me, right? You're following this with me. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, "Why are you come down? Come out. Set your battle in array. I wait Am not I a Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he's able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants. So here's what's at stake, okay? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be my servants, okay? You're going to serve us, right? Now, let's go down to 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words and the Philistines, they were dismayed. Now, come on now. I need you to understand what's going on. They were intimidated. Seriously. They were seriously intimidated. They were, they have, now think about this. This giant is coming out. He is taunting them. He's bringing a spirit of intimidation. Come on now. He's bringing um, confusion because he wants somebody to challenge him, somebody to fight him. Come on. Oh, my goodness. I'm building up something. I'm going somewhere here. Come on now. Come on now. He was actually dismayed. So when we think about somebody being dismayed, what do you think about? What's an issue or uh, something that will cause you to be dismayed? I need you to think about that in your mind because this is the scene. This is the scenario. This is what is going on. So I want you to, I want you to see this. So now he's standing there. He's, he's, he's going against Israel. He's speaking these things out. He's making, and then the word of God in 11 says, and they were greatly afraid. Now here's David. David is back home in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem. Okay. He's a son of Jesse. We know that. I'm going to go on down to 16. So, and the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. So here, now think about this. Now this is some serious taunting. You got the whole army of the Philistines led by the giant Goliath coming out every evening and every morning. And it's already been 40 days that they've been saying, you can't win. You can't, you can't win. You can't beat me. You can't beat us. Who you got? Bring out your strong man. If he kill me, then hey, we'll be your servants. But if we kill him, then guess what? You going to serve us. This, this is the taunt. You understand what I'm saying? So think about this. It's talking about the whole Israel army was dismayed. They were afraid. They were intimidated. Come on now. Woo. Mm -mm. 17. And Jesse said unto David, his son, take now for thy brethren and ephod. So now Jesse is at, David is at home with the father. Let me just paraphrase. David is at home with the father. The father saying, look, here, take some of this, these supplies and food and things down to the army. I need you to go down there to where the war is at. Here's the charge. Go down there to where the army is at and take these supplies. Now, wait a minute. 
David tends to the sheep. But come on, let's let's watch it. Come on now. Woo. And run, he said, and take the corn and the ephod, the ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren and carry these, you know, okay, so let's go to 19. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Okay, and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went. Now, here it is right here. David was given a charge. His father charged him and said, you are going to take this stuff down here. You're going to go down here to where your brother, your brothers are. Now, David knew it was a war going on. He knew it was a war going on. But here in obedience, he took and he went. Now, God told me somebody's stories in here. Somebody's story, your story, come on. I'm just pointing, not, not pointing to you specifically, but come on now. Somebody's story in here because we don't operate in obedience. So somebody wouldn't take and they wouldn't go. Come on now. Some people, God is saying, you know it's a war going on. You know it's a battle. You don't know what's going on. I'm sure that there was fear in the heart of David. He got brothers fighting in this army. He got brothers fighting out here with this war. He don't know the severity of it, but he understands anytime there's a war going on that there's casualties and things like that. So he knows that something is going on and daddy's sending him down there. Think about the fear that's rising up on the inside of him because God, because daddy's telling him to go. See, God is telling some of you today to go and you know that it's a battle. You know that it's a war. You know what you're going to be up against. Some of you are supposed to start ministry. Some of you are supposed to start churches. Some of you are supposed to go forth and maybe feed the hungry or whatever it is or go into the city of Chicago, but you're fearful. Come on now. The charge has already been set for you to go, but you're refusing. You're holding back. You're intimidated. You're dismayed. God is saying no more. Come on. Come on. Take and go. Come on, that's my charge for you. Take and go in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So take and go. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Now, let me go down to number 22. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spoke according to the same words. And this time David heard him, right? He heard him taunting, right? And addressing them that way. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, when they saw Goliath, they fled from him and they were sore afraid. Now that's a serious word because sore afraid means they were extremely afraid. Come on now. They were surely afraid. So this is something different. They ran. All of a sudden, here come Goliath. Everybody's running. Come on now. I need you to see this. See this. Now let's go on down to 26. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? Okay? Because I know it got to be a wager going on out here. And taketh away the reproach from Israel. Now, now, what is the approach? The reproach is to address someone in such a way that expresses disapproval, the rebuke. Okay, so he's saying the whole whole Israel is being rebuked by this man. Okay, this giant, whole the whole Israel. Okay, I know that's weird to say it like that, but it's the truth. The whole Israel is being rebuked. Rebuked. So he's saying, what what's gonna happen? What can we do, y'all? Now this is a little shepherd boy coming down here talking about what can we do. Okay, he not even part of the army, but yet he understands that there's a reproach going on. And he's saying, wait a minute, what can we do? Some of you need to be asking, what can we do? Because you've been sitting in the background long enough. You've been tending to the sheep when the war is going on. It's time for you to come on out and go. And now it's time for you to find out what can we do? We do. That means put your hands to the plow and be the change that you want to see. This is, this, is, this is what this is talking about today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And 27 it says, And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Okay, and he went through the whole thing, telling them that, you know, you're going to, you know, receive blessings and all of that. Uh, until now, here, 28. And Elab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the men. Now, this is David's brother. Come on now. And it says, And Elab... Eli Eliab's, I think that's how you say it. Anger was kindled against David. And he said, why did you come down here? Oh, we. Now, you know what? I'm going to stop right there. Because there are some people in our lives, when you actually walk out there and do what God is telling you to do, there are some people that are going to question your actions. 
Now, when God, he, he had a charge to take and go. He had a charge to go down there. But now the brother is looking like, what are you doing down here? So in your own life today, there's going to be a time when you're charged to do something, when you are sent out on a mission and assignment to do something. Come on now. And then somebody, even it could be somebody that's close to you, are going to question your actions. They're going to say, are you sure? Is that really what you trying to do? It seems impossible. It seems like that's not, mm, are you sure? Come on now, but you better know in your knower. You better be sure. You better have an assurance that, that God sent you. So it's time for you to take and go. Yes, mama, I see you. Yes, take and go. Okay? And so as we take and go, we have to know on that journey as we're going that we were sent. And so as we look down, we see the items that we're sent or that we're called to take out. Come on now, be it the word of God. We need to identify whatever it is that God has placed on the inside of you, hallelujah, and has gifted you with to, to, um, to cause you and telling you to instruct you, that's it, to instruct you to go out and to take, then you need to walk in obedience. Come on now. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Walk in obedience. Come on now. So now the brother is asking him, wait a minute, what you come down here for? Why are you down here? Come on now. And he got angry with him. Sometimes it's like the call that God gave us can be so, sometimes it's, it feels and seems abnormal. It's weird. It's not the normal path. It's not what people would normally do. And in that time, you know, you can feel like, man, nobody else is doing it this way. Maybe I am a little, right? But that's not, I'm telling you, that's not what God is calling you to do. When he told you to do it, he said, take and go. Okay. So let's, let's think about this now. So the brother got mad and he said, don't you supposed to be taking care of the sheep? <laughs> of course. And then he says, I know your pride and your naughtiness of thine heart, for thou have come down here to see the battle. Basically, now he's rebuking his little brother. Like, what you doing down here? You just come down here to be nosy. You know you prideful. You know, you know, you know how he is. Okay, so David said, what have I done? So in other words, he said, what have I done? Is there not a cause for me to be down here? Basically, I'm doing what I'm called to do. Okay? So, oh, praise God. Mm, 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 mm. So then he turned, he spoke to another. Let's go down to 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. So now when David was talking to his brother, Saul overheard him, asked him to come. And so now he's talking to him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. You going to go fight with the Philistine? Come on now, something rolls up on the inside of David where he's saying, now I'm going to go. Y'all ain't going to go. Y'all not going fight to the, fight the giant. Come on, I'm going to fight him. But listen, let, ooh, come on now, some of us that needs to be our heart attitude in the face of the giant, in the face of the taunting, in the face of the adversity. Some of us need to take this stance right here. Come on now and, 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 and reassure the people. Come on now, reassure the people and say, you know what? Let no man's heart fail. Come on now. Don't fail because of him. Don't be discouraged because of him. Come on now. Thy servant. I'm going to go and fight with this Philistine. Come on, 33. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. Now, here it is. I keep talking about the little shepherd boy. Here it is in the word. You can see that that's what he was, a little shepherd boy. You a youth. And he's a man of war from his youth. So think about it. This is a man of war who's been raised up to fight. David, you've been raised up to, to, to tend to the sheep. And here you finna say you, and now look, let's just say David is 5'4". Now with nobody, there's nowhere in the word that actually um, uh, depicts exactly what his height is. But he, he's a youth, okay? He's taking care of the sheep. He's a little scrawny thing. And here you is, you finna go up against a 9 foot 9 giant. But think about his, his attitude here. And David said unto them, Okay, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and I smote him and slew him. Come on now. In 36, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Now, come on. 
Why is that important? That's important because all of our past victories, all of the things that God has, all, all the things that God has already brought you from is going to be your testament. Come on now. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Come on now. Everything that God has done for you in your life, in the times of when you're facing your giant, you need to recall exactly what God has done for you already because therefore that, that's where your faith is going to rise. There's going to be a strength that's going to rise on the inside of you. He's, he has a confidence here. And and see, that's what it is. When you go against these giants, I want you to reflect now on all the things that you've been through in your life, all the things that God has already delivered you from. In his case, what's your lion? What's your bear? What things have you already, okay, like so, if it's a financial burden that you have right now, and you can think back and say, oh, I remember when God paid that house off for me. I remember when I didn't have any food and I was in the grocery store and somebody in the line paid my food for me, paid my food bill for me. Oh, I remember when somebody gifted me. Oh, I remember when I didn't have and my car was breaking down and then somebody, some, you know, the Good Samaritan came by and helped me. I want you to think about all the things that God has delivered you out of the hand of. Come on now, because that is what's going to help build up your faith, your strength. So when you, when you face a giant, and if God gave me this title, that means the people under the sound of my voice, the people that are watching this, the ones that will watch it via playback, that means that you're already at the place where you're facing the giants of your life. You've already conquered the lion and the bear. So God is charging you to recall the times of triumph where he has brought you through, where he has delivered you out of the hand of that lion and that bear that came up against you in the name of Jesus. So now use that to propel yourself forward in faith as you fight and take down the giants glory to God glory to God glory to God 37 David said moreover the Lord shall deliver me out of the paw of the lion come on the Lord it was the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear and he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine so here it is he's recalling he's already recognizing he understands he's calling upon the strength and, and, and the deliverer he's calling upon him come on now come on now he's saying the same God that delivered me from that lion the same God that, that, that brought that bear come on me a uh, victory in that situation is the same God that's going to do it now. He, God is the same God that's going to do it now for you in your life. Come on now. Come on now. Recall it. Let that thing stir up on the inside of you. Come on. Recognize, realize, understand who you are and who our almighty God is. Come on now. Come on now. In verse 38, and Saul armed David with his armor. Now, let me, let, let me stop right there real quick. Saul, now Saul, I already told you in the beginning that Saul is 6'1". And he said, well, if you, if you just, since you're so bent on going on out here, then let me at least give you some armor. Let me at least give you something that's going to kind of protect you while you out there. Okay, that and that's typical of the world today. When God called you to do something, when you when you so when you standing on and you say, I don't care what nobody say, I'm gonna do it anyway. Come on now, then what do they try to do? Then they try to, you know, they say, Are you sure? They offered him his armor. Um, they offering you advice. Come on now. How many people if they say, okay, well, since you so, you know, bent on going out there, how about this? How about you do it this way? Uh, how about you mm, put this on? See, that's what this is representative. This is what this is representing. This is what this is representing. He knew that that David had heard the charge. He knew that he was he was um, standing on his faith and believing God. So Saul got in there and it may not, his intentions may not have been negative. I'm not trying to say that, but it doesn't mean that just because something comes to you that it has to be negative, the intent of the person may not be negative. That's not what I'm saying. Don't take that and run with it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No, it's just saying that people have a tendency, um, to want to offer you their advice, but it's okay to, to, to have the advice of those people. But I'm telling you that you need to make sure that you are confident in what God is saying and let their words and their advice line up with the vision, line up with the words that God has given you already. You understand what I'm saying? That it doesn't deviate from the plan and the instructions of God. That that advice does not alter your steps and movement in what God is saying. That's what I need you to, to pick up on today. You got it? Amen. Okay. And Saul offered him his, um, do, 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 do. okay. So Saul offered him his armor, right? And so now let me see. 
Okay, 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on the helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with the coat of mail. Now, we know that his coat was nowhere near what the coat of, uh, <laughs> of what Goliath had on, but nevertheless, we know that, that his coat was smaller. Now, I'm trying to remember because I thought I had made uh, me a note about that, about what our armor... Yeah, okay, so our typical armor... And a typical man, the coat is, the coat was 126 pounds that Goliath had on. But in a typical coat of male, it's 22 pounds. So think about the size difference. And what, so Saul's armor, Saul's coat was 22 pounds. But Goliath's coat is 126 pounds. Okay? The typical Israel army sword head is one pound, and Goliath's sword head is 15 pounds. You understand what I'm saying? So I need you to, I'm just trying to give you that little piece of information there so that we can understand that. Okay. Now, woo, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Okay, so 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he um, essayed to go, and he had not proved it. Uh-oh. Now, that thing struck me when he said he hadn't proved it. Right? So... What is that saying to say he hadn't proved it? Now, when you think about it, I just want you to understand that, in other words, it was unfamiliar to David. David had never worn no armor before. He didn't never have no sword before. So he didn't understand. That's what that word means. It wasn't comfortable. There was, he wasn't confident in it. That wasn't what he has been used to. That's not the instrument or the weapon that he has been brought up on to be able to utilize. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why that's significant. Okay, he had not proved it. And that's what he said. I cannot go with these for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. He said, enough. I cannot go out here with this. And 40, and he took his staff in his hand. Come on. He took his staff. Now, that's what he used to. A staff, the shepherd's staff. That's all I need you to understand. So he took his staff in his hand. Oh, I lost my place. I got so excited. Okay. He took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. He put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had. The shepherd's bag. See, this is what he done proved. Listen to this. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came and drew near to David. Come on now. 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained. Come on now. He was like, you're unworthy. So he's looking at him negatively, like he disdained him. That look of like, please stop. Like, get away from me. Like, little boy. Um, and that's what he said to him. He said, for you are but a youth, a ruddy and a fair countenance. Like, get on out of here. Ain't nobody finna fight you. Go on now. Okay? And 43, and the Philistines said unto David, am I a dog that thou cometh to me with staves? Okay, so like he's saying, like, here you go, like, fetch this, fetch this. Is that what you finna do? Are you finna play a game of fetch with me? I ain't no dog. Like, where's your weapon? Where's your armor? Come on now. You coming up against me? Where's your stuff? Oh, but he had all that he need. Come on. Somebody tell me. He had all that he needed, right? Come on now. Woo! I'm getting excited. So let's go to 44. And the Philistines said to David, come to me. And I, in other words, he got tired of it now, okay? So he cursed at David. He said, and the Philistines said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. 45. Then David said to the Philistine, come on. Somebody needs to say this today to your, to your giant. Come on. David said to the Philistine, thou cometh to me with the sword. Hey! And with the spear. And with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. So the ones that you're talking about, hey, that's the strength that I'm coming in. Do you understand me? Come on now. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand and I will smite thee. Come on now. And I will take thy head from thee. Come on, I'm gonna chop your head off. And I will give the carcass of the, I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. So in other words, you're talking about this, what you're gonna do to me? How about this was gonna happen to you? Come on now. And the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Now, here it is. He, he turned this thing back around, but what did he do? He, he pulled it and said that it is, everybody's is going to know that it is God who did it. It's not going to be me. Come on now. I'm just going to be the vessel. These are going to be my hands. He's going to use my hands. He's going to use my feet. Come on now. He's using my mouth. But guess what? At the end of the day, I need everybody to recognize because I'm you looking at me as I perform this action, but I'm using everything that he gave me to point back to him. Come on now. And that's how we have to be. When God is calling us to do something, he may be using your voice. 
You may be the most phenomenal singer out here, but you need to be making sure that you are pointing people back to God and not to you. See, that's where we get caught up today. That's where, that's where the, and there's no anointing out here. People just singing. God got enough singers in the church. I don't know why this is coming out, but this is, this is what God is. I feel this thing revving up on the inside of me. He don't need no more singers. He need people that's going to allow the power of God, the anointing to flow through their voices. Is that you? Come on now. Come on, X, I see you, girl. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. Come on now. You come in the name of the Lord. As we fight our giants, as these giants come down, we have a confidence and an assurance today, this day. And at the end of it, when the battle is already won, we're going to point back to our Father. We're going to point back to the Almighty God. Every action, everything that is that we are doing is going to point back to the Almighty One. Come on, not me. Don't look to me like I done did something great. Come on now, pastors and preachers. You better point to the Almighty. Your anointing and your help, your strength, it comes from the Almighty God. It is not you. You're just a vessel. Come on. A, a, a vessel longing to be filled by him, right? That's what we say. That's what we sing. That's what we confess. But then when people start looking to you, now you got the big head. Come on now. You're supposed to be giving God the glory. Make sure that we give God the glory. Father, let's, let's repent right now. Because this is not even part of it, but because it came up today, I know that this is what God wants us to, to, to think about. So, Father, I, we just ask for forgiveness right now, Lord God. Anytime that we have become haughty in mind, haughty, oh God, that you've used us and people have come to us and pointed to us in some way, Father, we repent if we did not direct that to you. Because everything should be directed to you. You should get the glory out of everything that is said, everything that is done, out of our entire lives, oh God. So, Father, we repent now. Have your way, oh God. Cause us to, to reflect on those things and times where that may have happened, oh God, and not allow it to happen again. Make us have an awareness of that, that everything we do, everything we say should be pointed back to you, and we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's what he said. He said that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Come on now. And in 47, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. Come on, Yolanda Adams. Sing it, girl. <laughs> this battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. In 48, and it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted, ran towards the army to meet the Philistine, and David put his hand in his bag. He took therefore out a stone, and he slang it, and he smote the Philistine in his forehead. Woo! That the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he smote that Philistine, and he slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Why is that significant? Because David said he was going to chop his head off. Right? Remember the prophetic word. Okay, but there was no sword in his hand. So therefore, David ran, stood upon the Philistine. So now little David is standing on top of the nine foot nine giant. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took his sword. Oh, goodness. He took his sword. He drew it out of the sheath and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Come on now. They fled. Come on. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. Come on now. It's time for you to rise up. It is now time. Come on, people. It's time for you now. You saw those giants. Whatever those giants was, I told you to write down on the paper, right? I told you to write down whatever that giant is. Now, again, David's giant is Goliath, but that not, may not necessarily be your giant. Okay, your giant name may not be Goliath, but whatever that giant's name is, you were supposed to write that down on a piece of paper if you had it, or or if you uh, had a mental note of it, then that's fine. I need you to think about it, but whatever it is, like on this paper, I got Goliath, whatever it is, I want you to see that thing in the name of Jesus being destroyed. I want you to see that thing, that giant coming down. I want you to see that wall being taken down in the name of Jesus. Come on now, we're going to extend our faith. We're going to believe God. Come on now. It is so. It is already so. So do you believe it? Do you believe it? If you believe it, I need you to give God some glory, praise, and honor. It is time. It is time. 
Come on now. I need you to understand that size doesn't matter. We already talked about how small David was in comparison to the nine foot nine giant, but it didn't matter. Size doesn't matter in your battle. Who, whatever your giant is, it don't matter how big it is. It don't matter how enormous it is. It don't matter how intimidating it may look. Come on now, stay in your lane. What has God given you? What is the weapons that God has used that have you have prevailed in your life with? Is it prayer? Is it fasting? Come on, what is it? That is what you have proved in your life. And that is what God is calling you and to, to use to defeat your giant. Come on now, I need you to understand it. Size doesn't matter. We need to make use with, of what God has already given us. God has given you many weapons. There are things, some of you are prayer warriors. Some of you are praise warriors. Come on now, I need you to understand who you are in the spirit realm. Come on now, some of you have the anointing upon your voice when you shout, when you sing, when you exhort the almighty God. You feel his presence and anointing. Whatever it is that he has proven in your life, come on, whatever he has used in your life to take down the, 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 the lion and the bear, come on now, is the same tools that have been proven that's going to take down this Goliath. That's going to take down this giant, I should say, in your life. Come on now. It doesn't matter. We need you to have, you need to believe God. You need to have faith. When you face this opposition, don't allow the spirit of intimidation to come in and to taunt you and to discourage you. Come on now. That is, that, that's what it's created to do. It's created to cause fear and cause havoc and to, to make you compare who you are. Well, you know what? That's a good thing. Come on now. It's a good thing because in your strength, you can't do nothing. But in his strength and in his ability is when all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on now, it's not in your own strength. And whenever you think it's in your own strength, that's when we fail. When we don't rely on, cling to, adhere to, and trust in the almighty God for the victory. So today I challenge you and I charge you to trust God for the victory. Don't worry about the people. Don't worry about the size of the circumstance or the situation. It doesn't matter what the doctor said. Come on now, whose report will you believe? Who you going to trust in? Who you going to rely on? It doesn't matter that this giant is standing tall. It doesn't matter that this giant is standing tall. Glory to God. It doesn't matter the size of it. It doesn't matter the size of the opposition and how fearful they try to make you be. In the name of Jesus, you rise up. In the name of Jesus, you know who you are. You have faith in the almighty God. You point everything back to him and give him glory for what he is doing in your life. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And here, this is what I want to get to in 52. And the men of Israel and Judah arose. Hey, cut up our shot. And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. Think about that. Now, all the time before that, they were afraid. They were dismayed. They ran in fear. But guess what? When David stepped out and did what God called him to do, and he operated in his lane, and he did exactly what God, God called him to do, what happened? Joy rose up. Come on now. Fear was released out of the atmosphere, and now all of the Israelites arose. They rose. They understand. They shouted. They pursued. So you're holding people back when you don't do what you're supposed to do, when you don't step out there and do what God is calling you to do. There are people that are, whose lives are in the balance. They're they're, they're on the fence. They're walking in fear. Come on. They're walking around aimlessly, not knowing what to do. But because you're not in your position, come on now, they won't arise. They're still sinning. So whose life are you holding in the balance because of your disobedience or because of your hesitancy? That's a question for you to ask today. That's a question for you to ponder today. That's a Selah moment for you, for me. Now, I keep saying you, but I want you to understand this is for us, guys. This is for us to meditate on and to think about. Come on now. People respond and lives were changed. Victory was won. The whole entire army rose up as a result of David taking and going. Come on now. So in the midst of you taking and going, when you're given that charge by God, when you're given that instruction by God, it may be difficult. When you think out and you look at and you look around and you look at the people and you look at what's going on and you're like, Lord, me, little old me, you want me to do what? And sometimes that's our attitude and that's okay. 
that's okay. But I'm today, I'm here, I'm praying right now that something else rises up on the inside of you. Hello, Miss Harris. Hey, Miss Cherise. Yes, Lord. Thank you and thank the Almighty Heavenly Father. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it is so powerful. We got to walk in this thing. We got to walk it out. We got to do it because it's already predestined for us. We win, guys. We win. But how many of us are sitting back on our anointing? We're sitting back on what God has called us to do because of fear and intimidation. The giant is raving hallelujah he's taunting 40 days 40 nights come on now some of our giants have been there for years and we haven't got up and fall for years we haven't rose up and believed god for victory but god today is saying it is time to take down the giants so i want you to get your posture together come on it said that he began to he began to run towards the come on now you ain't gonna run towards nothing that that where there's a spirit of fear. So we bind that spirit of fear today in the name of Jesus. You ain't going to start running after and coming after nothing that you fearful of. I'm telling you, you better come on now. He began, he began to take a posture of victory. So I need you to do the same thing. Some of our posture of victory is like this. Our prayer mode, right? Is this the prayer hands? Come on now. Some of our posture of victory is praise. When we open up our mouth, glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you got to take your posture of praise and you go forth in the name of Jesus and do what he has called you to do. Hallelujah. And as the people, they arose. And that thing really blessed me to see that the whole army, now they arose and they're ready for battle. And 54 says, and David took the head of the Philistine. Come on now. So today I want you to see that you're t you've taken the head. Come on now, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Come on, come on. Faith, rise up on the inside of your people, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you and praise you today, Lord God, that the giants of our lives are coming down. We thank you, Lord God, that the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of fear, and all that, Father God, is no more. We thank you, Lord God, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you today, Lord God, that every giant, every giant, regardless of his name, they uh, uh, your people have wrote it down. They know who they are. They've identified who they are. And we decree and declare today that those giants are coming are down in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the giant of fear, the giant of loneliness, the giant of rejection, the giant of selfishness, the giant of pride, the giant of poverty, the giant of sickness, whatever it is, oh God, we thank you today that that giant has fallen, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we today, we today, just like David, we're taking the head of that giant, hallelujah, and we're putting it up for all to see, oh God, that we are no longer affected, that we are no longer affected by this giant in our lives. And Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victory today, oh God. It is so. It is so. It is so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Hallelujah. Hey, Gen C. Hey, sis, I see you. Yes, Lord, I trust you. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on now. That's what we need, guys. Hallelujah. Hey, yes. Come on. I hear the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of the army arising. I hear the sound. Come on now, rise up. Rise up. Come on now, y'all know I'll go in. You know I'll go in. Come on, rise up, people of God. Yes, X, I see you. I'm telling you, that's it. Come on now. We're the army of the Lord. Come on now. We trust God. We trust God. Come on. Do you trust God today? I'm telling you, your giants have fallen in the name of Jesus. And it doesn't matter. Every day that you're faced with a giant, every day that you're faced with something huge and enormous, come on now, that's going to cause fear or whatever to rise up on the inside of you. I'm here today to challenge you. I'm here today to challenge you to take on your weapons of warfare. Come on now. They're not carnal through God, but they're might. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations, everything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So everything that would exalt itself. Come on now, all the things 
Saul, the naysayers, the people that are coming behind us, people that are saying negative things, people that are asking you, are you sure that's what God said? Are you sure that's what you should be doing? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. And I'm going out here with the strength and the power and the authority of my Lord and Savior. Come on. And the backing of all heaven. Come on now. Army of God, arise. Slay your Goliath. Slay your giant. And again, I keep saying that, but I, I, I keep saying giant, even though the story is about Goliath, because again, God showed me that Goliath is the name of David's giant. So you, whenever I say Goliath, you have to replace whatever the giant was that was in, in your life. You're going to replace Goliath with that, right? Because Goliath was David's giant. But what is your giant today? It is coming down. If you just joined me, I'm telling you, I want you to go back and watch this thing. Click, like, share, whatever it is. I don't even know how, how to say it. But I'm just telling you now, Goliath has fallen in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Father God. Lord, we thank you and praise you that the Goliaths of our life, the giants of our life have been defeated, Almighty God. And we pray praise you. We point right back to you to give you glory and honor because we know that it is in, by, and through your strength and ability that he has even fallen, that our giants have fallen today. And we give you glory. We thank you that we stand in victory today. We stand decreeing and declaring almighty God that you are Lord. We're the army of the Lord and we're rising up today to give you glory, honor, and praise and thanking you almighty God that you've done a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so full this morning. Thank you guys so much for joining c to c Worldwide Ministries. Wake up Wednesday. Again, yes, I'm telling you to wake up. It's six o'clock in the morning, right? I'm yelling and screaming. But the, the charge is to command a sleeping nation to arise, to really see what God is saying and to apply those principles to our to our lives. And I keep saying to our entire week, right? Every day, whatever, whatever you're faced with in each and every day, that you know that you're victorious in it. Amen. So this week, I want you to pray. I want you to focus on whatever thing. And there's sometimes some things come up that may have been hidden that we didn't think about at first. Well, if it comes up, just apply the same principles. Believe God. Know that size doesn't matter. Come on now. Have faith. Trust God. And step out there. And come on now. Defeat the enemy. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Let me see who on here. Hey, Miss Audrey, I see you. God bless you. Hey, Miss Florence. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for being on here. Ex, Miss Sylvia, good morning. God bless you. Hey, Jency, I see you. Hey, Tam. Hey, Nicole, Mimi. Hey, I see you. Hey, Sharice. Hey, girl, I like that name. Hey, <laughs> Hey, Jess. God bless you guys. Hey, BDB, I see you. Dominique, I see you, baby girl. Calvin, God bless you guys. Mama, hey, Mama. I see you on here. Brian, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful day and know that you walk in victory. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.